Okay, I am excited to unmold this one. I know it looks a little bit plain, but I think when we take it out and we put the gold edges on, and it's just going to be spectacular. I, this was inspired by some post I saw on Instagram, and they had kind of this thing going on in the corners that reminded me of peacock feathers, and I added this just for something in the middle, and I like the little piles of gold in the corners just to spruce it up. Now, of course, the brass handles that are embedded in the resin. This mold holds 64 ounces of resin, and I probably have 32 or so. And I actually messed up the edges of the uh, mold, like here's a little spot. There's some chunks taken out of the side when I heated it too much, but it didn't ruin the whole mold. It's still usable. It's just got a few little flaws, which I don't mind flaws. So I'm going to show you the underside first, just so you can see the underside, which shows more of the actual the glass bits than it does on the other side. Um, and it just shows kind of how the resin kind of puddled which I kind of expected that. I wasn't expecting this to be the side. That's the bottom side. This is the top side. Now, I do have some little micro bubbles, but still, it's quite lovely. So it had a little lip around the edge because I didn't fill that um, mold up all the way to the brim. So anytime you're under the height of your mold. Sometimes it's going to be a little raised edge and I kind of trim that off but I still like just a little bit of a raised edge. It gives me a place for my um, paint pen to kind of follow the, ri the ridge of and do a better job on outlining. I'm going to use and I also will go over the products before I finish this is Pebio for Artist Marker, and it's a giant jumbo gold oil paint pen, and I'm going to use that. And then I'm just going to use a Deco Color gold paint pen just around the edge, and then use the jumbo one for the sides. And it's really cool to see the sides the way they are, but I think the gold around the edge will just really finish it off. And, um, the only thing I could say, possibly, is the fast set um, as the top layer maybe is not quite as shiny as the medium viscosity. I think the medium viscosity has a little bit more of a glassy look. That's my only observation about that. I'm just going to start, and I just want a little bridge. And this is a chisel tip, so it works really well. If you accidentally mess up a little bit, if you go with alcohol right away, on a paper towel you can pretty much get it off immediately. So I always have my alcohol nearby. <clears throat> if you wait too long, you have to use paint thinner which you can do. You can let it totally dry and use paint thinner to clean up any boo-boos. I like to shake every so often and just repress just to get it going, flowing really well. Okay, so there is the edge is done and I still have the sides to do which you can totally leave but I'm going to paint the sides as well so it's all paint this takes a little bit of time to dry 
You can also use the gold leafing that comes in a, a, a jar that you get on Amazon or you can get it at um, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I used like a little pack I got from Amazon, a multi-pack of colored glass bits, which are all in here. And then I also used some um, different multicolored confetti, larger chunky confetti, to get this colored effect here. See, those are glass bits and chunky confetti. And <clears throat> When I made the resin, the first layer, the gold, was made with a little bit, because this is more of an antique gold. This is, it says pale gold by Aridron, but it's not pale, it's really antique. And this is a much brighter gold, as you can tell. I love this stuff. It, this is from Decorom from Amazon. It lasts forever and it's a super bright shiny gold. This though ha has more of a molten gold so it, it goes more looks like more of a liquid gold whereas the other is more of a mica gold. You see a little bit more of the powders in it but it still has so much shimmer. I love it. And then I also put a few drops of rich gold pinata alcohol ink into that. So that was the gold and I'll, when I put the little chunks of glass in, these are I think from one of the home stores, either like Home Goods or Michaels or somewhere. They're gold glass bits but they're more of an antique gold so I use those in the first round mixed in with a little bit of the gold resin I had left. So those were that was put into the corner. Now the final coat that was just the top coat, which was the fast set resin. I put these pieces, which are grander gold, grandier gold from Counterculture, and see the difference in the colors. So I, I went brighter because of the brass and all. I put a little bit brighter just in the corners on top of the other gold, and it has a little bit of it that comes up above the resin line which I kind of wanted that. I wanted it to look like piles of gold so that was what I used. Copper color was Lorez Molten Copper and I put a couple of drops of the rich gold alcohol ink in with that. The turquoise color was um, Dragon Scale by I forget whose sign, whose little symbol that is, it doesn't say, but um, they offered all kinds of colors. It's a pigment paste and it's metallic and so I used Dragon Scale for the turquoise and then I added a little bit of Mermaid Mica from Etsy Funshine Color Shop into that just to kind of thicken it up a bit because I wanted to wait until my resin was at a certain time and temperature before I actually put it in so that it wouldn't spread and, and just disperse totally inside of the resin. So in order to do that, you have to wait at least 25 minutes or more to add it into your clear resin. So um, I wanted my pigments to be pretty heavy and, and not float away. And they still did that a little bit on the edges, just with the heat and everything, but it's still a beautiful effect and I'm extremely pleased with it. Okay, so that was the gold, the copper, the turquoise, and the blue was All American Mica from Counterculture DIY, a beautiful just straight on bold blue mica powder with um, an iridescent shimmer and that was the blue color which you see little bits and pieces of and then I used olive from counterculture DIY and that's that uh, slightly olivey looking um, 
green that you just see just a little bit. It kind of got covered up by the others, but you can see bits and pieces of it. And the glass bits were blue and an olive green and a copper and a gold and a turquoise color. So that's how I chose my colors, kind of inspired by a peacock. So this is the final results. And if you can see how lovely the effect is. Again, it's not crystal clear. I do have some little tiny micro bubbles, and um, I think the facet also does not give as much of a glass like effect on top, but it still does this just as well as UV resistant resident and all that stuff. And again, that's kind of the back side, just so you kind of see the the actual colors a little bit better as far as the blue the olive, the turquoise color, the gold, so you can see that pretty effect. So I love this tray. I love it. The mold, again it, it takes over 64 ounces. The mold is, the tray is um, almost 11 inches wide and 18 inches long, so it's a large tray really large. So this can be totally a decorative piece on a table. You could serve crackers and cheese on it, something like that. Um, it could sit in a bedroom on a vanity with your perfumes and things sitting on it or whatever. You can use it for multiple purposes, but I am really pleased with the outcome. <sighs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it and um, there's the gold painted edges. You can also use the liquid gold that's in a jar. You can get it from Michael's Hobby Lobby. You can get like an off brand. You can get a name brand. You can find it on um, Amazon as well. And you can use a paintbrush and put it on, but I like using the pens. They just make it to me a little bit easier to do the, you know, to do the piece. So there it is, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.